So my talk uh, is a contribution of Raman spectroscopy to assess cadmium toxicity on marine mussels. So this study is a part of a larger program that is the spectro program. Um, the aim of this program is to use um, um, spectros uh, vibrational spectroscopy to, um, to survive the biota in marine uh, uh, ecosystem and to evalu evaluate the health of statue. So for just a reminder, what, what is it, Raman spectroscopy? So, from the, um, we have um, a, con uh, a light, which um, the incident light is focused through an objective on the substrate, on the sample, and uh, there is um, interaction with, with the light, and we have um, scattering, and uh, for the photon scattering with the same level energy, it's uh, railway scattering. But some of them will have energy, different level energy, and this is the Raman uh, scattering. It's an uh, inelastic scattering of the photon that, uh, uh, with the molecular bond. And the Raman spectra is the intensity of scattering light plotting against the Raman shift. So the spectrum is a representation of chemical composition and the advantages of uh, Raman spectroscopy is that it's non-destructive, non-invasive, analytical technique, but the contrapart of this technique that you need a chemetric, uh, chemometric tool to analyze because you will, you, you, oh, sorry, you will have a lot of data. So, Raman spectroscopy is more and more used over the 10 past years, and you can find application on microbiology for identification, pathogenicity, or also to, um, to know the metabolic production in biotechnology, but you, you find also application for food industry, for quality of food and control, and also in medical application for uh, cancer research, also in cell biology, but in the field of environment, um, Raman spectrometry is uh, concerned uh, by monitoring pollutant, especially in microplastic or nanoparticle, but there is no or only few study concerning uh, ecotoxic ecotoxicology or uh, toxicology evaluation on animals. So, in a previous study, uh, we showed that uh, spectral fingerprint of Escherichia coli exposed to arsenic, the spectral fingerprint is different after exposition with different concentration of arsenic, and we are able to show that the fingerprint is correlated with the dose response effect. From this study, we decided to apply this uh, technology to more complex organisms. So, what we have done? We take muscle. So, uh, muscle in synthetic water uh, during eight, eight days uh, to contamination of cadmium and after uh, tissue dissection, we spread it onto uh, aluminum surfaces and we recorded uh, the uh, spectra. Spectra pre-proceeding was done with the Olympus software. And the first question we have is, what is the difference of the spectra? Is it uh, for the same individual, the same tissue, or for the same tissue but coming from individual in the same uh, exposition, for the same exposition. So here you have the recorded uh, spectra for two, and, uh, two muscles, control muscles from two tissues, mantles and gills. And to analyze the data, we use a heat map. And here you have the scale of the heat map. 
And as you can see on the heat map, gills are um, the variability on uh, gills is less than in a mantle. In the mantle, you are higher variability in the spectra for one, uh, one tissue in the same organism or for one tissue in two organisms. So now we are going to show the result with the cadmium exposition form after recording the, uh, the Raman spectra and pre proceeding uh, the, the Raman spectra, you with, uh, you, we use uh, PCR multivariate variate for analyze all the results. And here you have the results of the first exposition for the gills. Here you have the control and the cadmium exposed organism. And as we can see on this scale, on the Raman shift, and with the PCR analysis, we can, this, we can uh, have here for the PC2, you have a dis, uh, discrimination between the control uh, uh, muscle and the exposed muscle. When we are going to go to show the loadings for the, for the, um, from coming from the, the analysis, you have the loading Two that gave us the nucleic acid, fatty enzyme, protein, and lipids that are more impacted by uh, the uh, cadmium exposition. So now for the mantles, for the mantles, here you have also the PCR multivariate analysis, and uh, here for the loading one we can see that we can uh, distinguish uh, the uh, control and the cadmium uh, exposed animals. And here you have the loading that we uh, find that it was uh, fatty acid, protein, and lipids that are more impacted by uh, the cadmium uh, exposition. So for the second exposition, we do exactly the same thing, but the question is, is it possible to distinguish the two concentrations of cadmium? So here, with the uh, PC2 here, you, have the, uh, you can distinguish uh, the control and the cadmium. They are clearly separate, but it was impossible to distinguish the two concentrations of cadmium. Here, you have the shift and the loading, and you are also, uh, we have exactly the same uh, band that are impacted, nucleic acid, pro fatty enzyme, protein, and also lipids. So when we study the mantle, here we have the results of the mantle and the two contribution of uh, the PCR analysis. And here we can uh, see also that it is possible to dis dis distinguish the control from the uh, cadmium exposed animals, but it is possible also, you see the three uh, different, uh, and you have here the loading that uh, uh, more impacted by uh, the cadmium concentration, and it is also protein and lipids, and what is interesting in the loading too, that we find that there is this band that is also affected, and this band perhaps could be related, uh, according to the literature, it could be the methylotronin that will be increased by the uh, cadmium exposition. And here you have uh, the separation of the two concentrations of cadmium and the control. So, in conclusion, what we can see is that chemometric analysis of Raman show that it's possible to separate the exposed uh, animals to uh, the non-exposed animals. Cadmium is non-essential metal and they exhibit uh, several cellular injuries and uh, cadmium suppress the activity of antioxidant enzyme, increase lipid peroxidation, and the main bands that are impacted, it's protein, lipids, and this is 
consistent with the literature on the cadmium ion toxicity. And in particular, the lipids is uh, very interesting because the, lipid, uh, the, analyze, uh, uh, the analysis of lipid with the same, exactly the same concentration of lipid show that there is oxidation, uh, oxidation of lipid, increased lipid peroxidation that perhaps we can see uh, with uh, this RAMA analysis. So this result, uh, it's a preliminary results of this project, but it will be confirmed and correlated with the traditional biomarker like lipid peroxidation, methylotonin and superoxide dismutase and this uh, ongoing work. So I will thank my collaborator on this uh, spectrum, uh, Spectrops project, in particular Omar Dibs, his postdoc and his chemometrics and Alexia. Uh, with um, the help with the RAMA analysis and uh, the financial support also, it's uh, the INR. And thank you for your attention.